So you probably want your programs to be fast and a way of achieving that is by using more of your CPU, using more cores of your CPU. Because nowadays you would have at least four cores maybe, whereas your program will just use one core. So there are multiple ways of achieving this, but if you have separate things to do that you can do independently, where you don't really need to care about synchronization, you can relatively easily make your program faster by using fork. So fork will clone the current process. It will have all the things the current process has and it will do all the things it will do, right? So if we have fork here, let's print something. And if we run it, we are going to have two printfs because we have two programs running the same code. And fork returns the value. We should actually capture the return value and it will return the process ID of the thing we just uh, cloned from the um, previous process, right? So we will have the PID in the current process, but in the child process, so the, the clone which is uh, forked, right? It's going to have, uh, well, fork is going to return zero. So it's going to set this to zero. So to know that we are actually in the parent or the child is we can look at the PID. So, so if we do in parent, just do puts here and default so default well I guess everything but zero right um, uh, in what's it called uh, wait that's wrong in parent and also it returns minus one if it uh, fails, so I guess we can test minus one F for fails. So as we can see, we have in parent and in child. And so in parent is printed by the original process and in child is obviously in the child process. So if we actually have something to do here, if we have multiple files, what we can do instead of just, you know, running the program on each file, we can delegate uh, each file to a different process. So we can create a child process and then check the return value of the PID or not of PID, the fork and then if the PID is zero, we're in the child well, we can do the thing, right? process the file and in the parent, well, you probably want to track the amount of processes you have uh, alive so probably want to create max fork car fork and well instead of you know hard coding it uh, to six or something you can use sysconf scn processors conf and that will give you the um, the amount of CPU cores you have. So why are we limiting the amount of forks? So if we keep forking for each thing we want to do, it's not gonna actually be faster because we have a finite amount of resources. We don't have unlimited CPU cores. And so if we just keep forking, let's say we have 100 forks and we have six CPU cores, well, we can't actually do anything with the forks the six CPU cores 
are still handling the six forks and it's actually going to slow things down because well the operating system will need to somehow handle those 100 forks so in the parent I guess we can um, increment the current forks and well there's also another um, function uh, wait so wait uh, we'll wait for a child process and it will I guess this will return the exit status maybe I don't know maybe not I think it's the exit status I don't know but you can also wait null and that will wait for a child to die but we can also do something like if current fork is equal to the max fork you know we will wait right and once the child dies we can decrement the current fork obviously this isn't perfect right but uh, you know or you, you can also wait for specific PID and uh, well how do you get the PID well from the PID right but that's just the latest one I guess you can um, store your PIDs in an array or something right because every time we are forking we get the PID well at least in the in the parent right so if you have some program that processes some file independently you can delegate each file to a separate process and that will run on multiple cores which will make it may make it faster or you know you can delegate each directory or something if you have a lot of directories and uh, yeah 